hello everyone welcome back to my channel for another video this video is going to be top 10 interview questions on lwc this is part 2 of the same video and the part 1 is already available on my channel i'll put the link in the description box and on the comments you can check that that is also very important uh, uh, video in today's video i focus more on the conceptual concepts of java scripts uh, which we use in the lighting web component and sometimes if you get an interviewer who has a keen interest on javascript will try to trick you with those concepts and uh, try to ask such kind of questions so uh, here i'll be covering those fundamental questions uh, sometimes they feels very tricky um, I have got my uh, notes for the questions and uh, uh, let's begin one by one. Okay, the first question is can we put multiple decorators in a single property? Uh, so this um, this is a very easy question as it sounds but the logic is something which you should definitely know. So we cannot put more than one property, uh, more than one decorator in a property because uh, uh, if we put more than one decorators, even the uh, execution engine will not be aware about which functionality or which property to which decorator to use first and that may you know complicate the whole uh, execution logic of the page and that will have some complicated issues with the performances as well. So Salesforce mm -hmm. as of now has not allowed us to use more than one decorator in a property. So we cannot use that. Okay. Can we can we change the value of a property which was passed by a parent component? So basically what Intel is trying to ask is that you have an at the rate API property, you have a property which you have enclosed with at the rate API decorator. So your parent component is passing some values to the child component. Can you change the value in the child component? So the answer is no, we cannot change the value in the child component because we get uh, values from parent component to child component in a read only uh, format but if it is absolutely required us to change the value then we have to clone the property and then we have to change the value and then we can pass the changed value to the parent component so that they can use the updated value so that's how we use the cloning we cannot change the property value directly we have to clone it okay the third question is <clears throat> Sorry for my uh, my voice. Uh, can we put the uh, wire decorator inside another method? Okay, or can we uh, can we define a variable with at the rate track property at the rate track decorator uh, inside a inside a method inside uh, let's say uh, we have a, uh, we have an imperative method inside which I want to put a wire method or in I want to create a property and want to define it by the at the rate track proper track track decorator. So answer is no. We cannot put any uh, uh, we cannot put a wire method inside any other method or even a property with a track decorator we cannot put inside another method because these uh, decorators are supposed to be used uh, within the class inside the class and should be attached with the class not inside a method we should not define them inside the method that uh, um, you know you will not be able to save uh, your class you will get errors okay <coughs> uh, sometimes we get uh, uh, the question is that uh, this wire function or a wire proper property when this uh, property uh, you know gets value within the life cycle hook okay so whenever your page loads if you have a wire property when this property will get the value actually okay so what happens is that whenever your page loads you will get the constructors okay after that your wire property or wire method will get the default value so it may be possible that uh, sometimes the values are not available <coughs> to be assigned that time. So if the values are not available to be assigned, the execution engine will assign the undefined value at that time. And uh, whenever in the later uh, stage, whenever the values are available, these property will be called again and then proper values will be assigned. So constructor will be called then your wire property will get the default value default will be could be undefined so if you are using this value later on let's say inside the connected callback then it is possible that you might be processing just the undefined value because values might not be available at that time so you need to be aware that this is called between the constructor and connected callback and you may get the uh, you know 
undefined value at the time so this wire function and wire methods will get will be called multiple times whenever the values are available or if something changes in between then also they'll be called again so they'll be called within the pages journey multiple times <coughs> sorry okay another important interview question is that what is the difference between um, event dot stop propagation versus event dot prevent default okay <coughs> let's talk about event dot prevent default whenever an event happens okay prevent default means it will uh, you know stop the default behavior of that event let's say you have a button and the default behavior of that button is that whenever you click on that button it will submit the form <coughs> but what you want is that whenever you click on that button there should be some validations which will be done on the form first then only you want to submit it so you want to make sure that it should not be submitted by default so then you will use the event dot prevent default because you want to stop the default behavior okay event propagation is uh, is used whenever you want to make sure that uh, uh, you know your event uh, does not propagate to the up in the hierarchy let's say you have a div and inside that div you have another div and then there is another div inside uh, the second div so you have a three divs which are inside each other and then every div has on click event okay but what you want is that if you click on the uh, the you know innermost div you don't want uh, the divs uh, the on click of outer divs to be affected then you will get uh, you know use event dot stop propagation because your event will get executed but it will not go up in the hierarchy and will not cause other divs uh, you know on click event to get executed so then you will use the event dot uh, you will use the uh, stop propagation event dot stop propagation okay <coughs> Uh, sometimes uh, they ask questions like why we write the export with the classes okay can you save your class without writing export see export keyword is basically used uh, because uh, we need to make sure that the properties or the functions we are writing inside that particular um, uh, javascript code is available outside uh, as well so another class or property can use those things that is why we have to write export and this is the default behavior you will not be able to save the class without writing the export because that's what salesforce has pushed us to do okay this is the default behavior uh, and you also need to understand that this class like structure is just the sugar coating javascript is working as it is it was working before uh, you know class like structure will not give will you know just give you a feel that this you are working more towards the object oriented thing but javascript is not an object oriented language so this class structure is actually just the sugar coating okay sometimes uh, they may ask what is the callback function so callback function is basically a function which you pass to another function as a parameter as a value so if your callback function is uh, you know uh, is a input parameter for another function then this is called as para, you know callback function uh, sometimes they ask that uh, uh, if the callback function is synchronous or asynchronous so callback function by default does not have its own behavior whichever function you are calling uh, this callback function inside it depends on that function's behavior to call it synchronous or asynchronous it does not have any you know inclination towards synchronous or asynchronous by default okay whenever they ask you you will say that it depends on which function is taking this callback function as an input parameter if that function is synchronous then this callback will be synchronous if that function is asynchronous then this will be asynchronous okay all right uh, the next question is uh, what is the difference between promise and promise all so promise basically is an object which basically tells you that they will uh, you know give you some value if it is resolved okay it has three stages promise all basically uh, you know is uh, i mean basically takes input of a couple of i mean it takes list of promises as the input and then when all the promises are resolved then only it gives you the result and result will also be in the same order as it took the input of all the list of values of promises result will also be in the same order okay <coughs> all right all right
I think I have covered many question. Uh, another important interview question is what is shadow dome? So shadow dome is basically a very complex concept and we are not using sh shadow dome as it is as we use in the JavaScript. Basically, it's a, uh, it's a kind of inner dome available inside the page where you can have your own set of, uh, uh, you know, uh, CSS or you can whatever changes you do on that particular uh, part of the page will not be affecting rest of your let's say you have a p tag inside your shadow dome and you have a p tag on your main dome component so if you add some let's say coloring on the p tag of your shadow dome it will not be impacting the uh, the main dome so shadow dome is basically a separate part of the same page which can have its own property and whatever you do inside that shadow dome will not be affecting your uh, actual dome okay it uh, has a couple of other things as well i will put a link in the description box if you want to explore more on the shadow dome part you can go through that link and can explore more uh, we are not using shadow dome uh, the same way we use in the javascript it is just a, a hint of it so you can uh, check that uh, another important interview question is that can we use the uh, can we use the lightning web component inside a record triggered flow so no we cannot use the lightning web components inside a record triggered flow basically it's lightning web component uh, can be used inside a screen flows wherever you have uh, to put uh, a lightning web component as a screen or as execution of something you can do that but not inside the record triggered flow currently it is not uh, uh, it is not possible all right uh, whenever you define a constant in a javascript class you define those constant outside of the class okay so sometimes you may get uh, this question that how to define constant in an epic class and uh, how to use them so you need to define it outside of your uh, your page yeah so I think those are the questions I wanted to cover today. There are a couple of other interview questions which I have covered in the part one and I'll keep on covering more interview questions on Lightning Web Components because I understand how important it is from the interview point of view and uh, you want you guys want more questions on that. So I'll keep on exploring and keep on adding you. Thank you all for your all love and support on my channel and I'll keep on working hard to bring more out of uh, uh, the interviews. Thank you so much guys.